Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. I'm making this video at, just to share some tips uh, for getting fish out of heavy structure if they've wrapped you up. If you've gone after bass, snook, redfish, you know, really any kind of fish that holds to structure, at some point you're going to get wrapped up and you've likely been there before and, uh, and it's very frustrating when they, when they do get away, whether they break you off uh, or not. In most cases it's a break off because of the, the, uh, the structure, especially in salt water. So uh, I'll cover uh, three different things that I do that I've, uh, I've realized has significantly helped me land more, uh, more fish than not, uh, again, once I do get, uh, get wrapped up. So I'll, I'll show two, two different videos. This first one is uh, me on the paddleboard. Uh, you can see I just hooked into a fish. It is a snook. Um, it, it bit. Uh, let me pause it so you can see. There's a little, uh, little cut right here, and you can see the snook was just starting to jump. And it hit uh, up up in this creek. I'm on my paddleboard. I don't have uh, I don't have an anchor or any way to stop myself. Plus, the wind is uh, going towards the mangroves as well. So I'm really at the the mercy of the elements here, and uh, not a very good position to to land the fish. So you can see uh, the the board was heading off to the right. Uh, at this point, the snook is just right around this bend. So the reason why I stopped, you can see I put the paddle in the water. And you'll soon see that I actually took tension off the line is that I just didn't want the line to be rubbing up against those trees. I would rather just give it slack and take the risk of the, the hook pulling. So line's completely slack at this point. I got off from the trees just a hair and uh, started putting some pressure on it again. Fortunately, it was, uh, it was coming my way right up along the, uh, the, line, the mangrove line. Um, there you can see it right there. Pause it. So there you can see the snook going. Uh, whenever they get near mangroves, uh, just a, a quick tip is just always keep your rod really low. Uh, at this point, the rod's not in the water, but it will be once it gets real close to those trees. You can see I dip my rod in the actual water. The snook is up underneath this tree. Many times when you dip it under the water, the, the fish will actually go underneath the limbs and come out the other side. In this case, the snook starts jumping right up in there, and that is uh, never a good thing because it got all wrapped up. So really the first tip is, is once you do start feeling structure on your line is to go against the human tendency, which is to pull real hard, to jerk back, because all that'll do is it'll almost kind of saw the line on uh, whatever type of structure it is, and that'll significantly increase the odds of getting broken off. So you can see I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never pulled back. I tried to just sweep it underneath the tree in hopes that it would uh, come out the other side, uh, but I did, I did keep tension on the line. So... Uh, first step, first tip is to not yank back. Second tip is just to keep tension on the line and just feel if the fish is there. Um, let me pause you. So right, yeah, right now I had to secure myself uh, with those uh, mangrove trees. So at this point, you can see the rod is hardly bent at all. I just have a little bit of tension, and I'm just trying to feel to see if the fish is uh, is is moving, if it's still there. Because um, in many in many cases, if it is moving, and you do have tension on the line. Um, that as soon as they actually are pointing the right direction is that you can start getting line back. And the benefit of not tugging too hard is that if you put a lot of pressure, uh, not only is that more tension on the, more friction on whatever structure it is, but, uh, but also it'll, uh, it'll agitate the fish, which makes it fight even harder. All right, so my next step was just to get up as close as I can, just to just see if I could look in there and see the fish. Sometimes if they're close, you can just reach down and grab them. Um, at this point, I, I couldn't feel the fish, but I, I just knew it was way back there, and I was trying to just see what direction the line was going in. And uh, I could kind of see the braid heading off, uh, I guess, uh, to the top right, but I couldn't see the leader, and I definitely couldn't see the fish either. Um, so I was just really, <laughs> at this point, a little perplexed. Uh, but then right here, I saw the, the line shot out. Um, so that's when I realized that it was actually still on there. All right, so the third tip as far as retrieving the, uh, the line is to do it slow and steady. Um, you just want to make the, uh, the process as smooth as possible. Definitely still on. Feel them. I hear them. Come on out of here. It's right down here. There he is. Nice. 
So as you saw when that snook came up, it was completely exhausted. It was because uh, it was literally down there fighting the entire time. Although I wasn't putting much pressure uh, with the rod, as soon as it got um, you know buried in the trees, it, it, it had a lot of of, uh, of friction based tension that it was feeling. So it was down there fighting the whole time. But uh, again, a decent snook, plenty of plenty of power, and I was just using ten pound uh, ten pound braid as line with uh, twenty five pound uh, fluoro leader. So here's another video, and this is also a snook. In this case, it's going to be a much bigger snook. We were on vacation, and we were staying on the, on this dock, and when I, we came back from fishing, I happened to look under the sailboat, and there was a really big snook under there. Uh, it was a hot summer day. It was it was just hanging out underneath the uh, the shade of this uh, this dock. So I went and grabbed a pinfish. Here's a pinfish. You can see it in the water right here, and uh, this is 20 pound braid, and uh, and then I put a 50 pound leader on here. And I just wanted to hope for the best. Again, a really big snook. I was hoping that it would go out towards the left. Um, however, things don't always go as planned. And again, in this case, uh, just the same principles apply, where this is a big, a really big fish taking out line very fast. I just didn't do any sharp movements. All I tried to do was just minimize the damage to the line. And then as soon as the fish stops pulling out real hard, stop taking drag, uh, then just slowly start bringing them in. And unfortunately, I'll, I'll uh, ruin it here, but unfortunately, I didn't get this one in, but I, I started making progress, and then the hook just all of a sudden just, just popped out. So anyhow, uh, I'll show you this video. It's a pretty cool clip. Yeah, so right there, the, the hook just pulled out, and um, and you can see the fish was way it went way underneath that dock. It was uh, it was jumping. And you can see here the the the, uh, the actual ripples from the jumping. It was jumping. It was just out of uh, out of view. But uh, but as I said before, it, it's all about just not just staying calm and, and not just being too aggressive, um, because the job is just to prevent as much line damage as possible. Let the fish wear out, and then slowly and steadily start pulling it in until it gets past the structure. In this case, again, I, I, I've got some ground on it, but, uh, but just the hook just, just happened to pull off a little bit too early. But anyhow, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment down below. Uh, otherwise, I hope you do subscribe to our YouTube channel, more importantly, our website where we keep all of our top tips. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live so strong and wear the line today